The economy's prospects are looking brighter than earlier and uh, the new government under the Prime Minister uh, joins hands with the RBI to tackle inflation head-on. Will growth feature next on the list after the slump in July? IP is expected to pick up to 2.7% in August. So is the economy at inflection point? Uh, that's the question I'm posing to uh, Indranil Pan, the Chief Economist at Kotak Mahindra Bank. Uh, Mr. Pan, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I want to start off by asking you what sort of estimates you're working with in terms of the IP. Uh, well, our own internal estimates are about 1.5 to 2 percent. We are not really looking at a 2.7 percent uh, immediately. And uh, probably one of the reasons behind that is that we had a lot of non-working uh, days in August, which, uh, which possibly could hamper the production process in August. Uh, instead, what we are sort of probably working with is, is a, 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 an even sharper jump in September because that would be the month of restocking before the uh, Diwali month uh, in October. So that's, that's the trajectory that we are looking at. Okay. So, but, uh, you know, um, also some bit of uh, the base effect, of course, is going to play out as far as August goes. Uh, uh, any, any, any comments on that? Uh, not really. I think we uh, probably would need to look beyond the base effect uh, when we look at all these data, which necessarily means that uh, the joys that we uh, necessarily express when IIP is at 4, 4.5% four uh, needs to be therefore mellowed down. And the gloom that we exhibit when IIP is at 0 0.5 or 1 or 1.5, uh, uh, that. So I think we, the IIP series per se is quite volatile. And what we would generally therefore tend to look at is more a moving average basis whereby as I've been sort of consistently saying is that we are, we are definitely seeing a bottom and into the busy season we would probably look at some amount of uptick in terms of the overall production uh, performance of the economy. But having said that, we are still not confident enough that we will be reaching higher uh, growth numbers in the future quarters compared to the 5.5 that we saw in the first quarter. So, you know, we've seen a few issues playing out as far as coal supply and electricity goes uh, during the past quarter. Any concerns you think will be contributed from that in terms of uh, the IP projections? I think uh, from a coal perspective, uh, definitely we are in a safe zone till December. So if, if there are any uh, negative ramifications, it would possibly be only the last quarter. Uh, but by that time, there could be, uh, yes, uh, uh, there could be a negative implication on energy and the overall uh, sort of production uh, performance of the economy. But I think to a certain extent, consumption might at that point in time become better uh, because of the drop in inflation that we are looking at or overall uh, uh, docile inflation expectations trajectory that we might be looking at. So I think it would be an interplay uh, of a lot of uh, uh, issues uh, rather than only the, uh, the coal issue. And anyways, I think the government is also working on in terms of the e-auctions of the coal uh, blocks. So I think it's, it's still quite uncertain and therefore we'll have to sort of factor in these issues as we go ahead. Hmm. As we speak to you this morning, we have seen uh, Brent and uh, WTI cooling of Brent, in fact, is almost at a four-year low. Uh, you know, how are you anticipating that will play out as far as the IP targets go, sir? Uh, I'm not sure whether that would have a significant implication for the IP immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think the, the issue also that needs to be factored in is what would be the implication in terms of the currency markets. Uh, going forward, if I am sort of looking at the uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, federal uh, interest rates turning, and what implication would it would probably have on the emerging market uh, currency? So some of the drop in the oil that you see could probably get neutralized. The second issue, of course, is that uh, this is the the drop that the the cap down of the oil that we saw today was more a reaction to the inventory buildup, uh, which is basically a weekly data. And uh, therefore, going forward, you can't expect a, a, a continuous $3 drop in the Brent crude every uh, sort of week or every fortnight. So I think pretty soon the oil should find a floor uh, as we sort of talk. And, and given the fact that we have still not got a clear signal from the U.S. Fed of an interest rate trajectory, uh, I think the, the, uh, the euro dollar should also sort of relatively stabilize, which, which would also be... Uh, uh, act as a stabilizing factor for the oil prices in dollar terms. Hmm. 
So I want to shift focus from the IIP to talk about a Bloomberg exclusive that uh, they picked up yesterday from sources which said that the Prime Minister is now going to give Governor Rajan veto as far as the CPI targeting goes. Uh, uh, how, what are you reading into that? No, I think to a, to a large extent, uh, even uh, having not said uh, this quite uh, clearly, I think there is, there is a clear direction from the Reserve Bank of India. And if you remember when the government took over and there was a discussion on the IIP, uh, on the CPI uh, per se, uh, the Prime Minister also had clearly pointed out or the Finance Ministry had pointed out that uh, they would go with the RBI's uh, analysis of the CPI and RBI's uh, sort of trajectory of the monetary policy. Uh, and, and there's a broad consensus in terms of uh, the overall atmosphere uh, where inflation needs to come down on a more sustainable basis. So I think we would uh, still work with the 6% target for January 2016. Uh, and having said that, I think the 8% target for January 2015 is more or less uh, uh, seen and should be achieved uh, unless there is some, uh, some tail risk that might play out, which I'm not really uh, sort of seeing on the horizon immediately. Mm. So one last word. Uh, do you think it was necessary for this move on the part of the government, uh, you know, given the fact that you have, of course, the Ujit Patel panel, uh, which has come up with uh, guidelines as far as CPI targeting goes? Um, I want your comments on that. No, I think uh, uh, sort of world over, uh, there there is a focus definitely from an emerging market perspective to bring down inflation. And, and I think the way the RBI has clearly sort of communicated is that unless we get inflation down uh, on, a, on a more sustainable basis, it would be very difficult to achieve growth on the other hand on a more sustainable basis. So I think from that perspective, there is a necessity to bring inflation down and that's, that's possibly what they are working uh, towards. The other implication, of course, is the, uh, the, uh, uh, the implication of the, interest, uh, the inflation side on the currency. Uh, which necessarily means that it, unless you get inflation down very solidly and if inflation tends to spurt at certain points in time, uh, given that the global inflation continues to be on the lower side and within the two-person zone in most of the developed economies, there could be a, an implication in terms of the currency markets also. So I think from that perspective uh, too, you need to bring down inflation in a significant way and on a sustainable uh, basis. Shh.